Okay, an um, aggregation pipeline. So if you remember that in SQL, and if we want to make aggregations, we can use group by function. And here in MongoDB, actually, uh, it is, um, I'm, I'm not going to say it is more complicated, but I would say it is more intuitive. Um, so aggregation pipelines means that you can define your queries at multiple stage and and the queries that are from the first stage will be the input uh, for the query from for the second stage. So for example, in the first stage, you find out that all the tweets that contain the keywords uh, election. And next, you can see, OK, so for those tweets that how many tweets that have coordinates, OK? And next, and you can see that, OK, so what is the average Okay, uh, favorite for the tweets that have both coordinates and also elections. Okay, uh, so you can also customize uh, the process. So, for example, you can move this one first, you can calculate average first, and next you can uh, see that which tweets uh, contain coordinates. So, that is a kind of basic idea of the pipelines. Um, so that allow you to customize your queries into multiple stage, which kind of break down your queries into multiple pieces, uh, which I think will will be simpler. Uh, so it, than that if you want to make queries uh, all together. So uh, so for example, so there are several operators you can use at each stage. So you can use a match, which simply is a uh, define your queries that fill to your, your tweets. For example, that in the match, you can find out okay, all the favorite count greater than one. And also, you can also next, you can use a project so that so uh, for those tweets that whose tweets are great, favorite is greater than one, I want to see the text and also I want to see the favorite. Okay, so back to our campus. So um, before we move on to aggregations, I just want sh also want to see you one more. Thing that if you go to your define your queries and if you want to export your query okay and so that's how you can do that so you can copy this one or you can um, if you are using Python or different programming languages and you can copy that one into your Python code directly okay um, so let's go to aggregation so aggregation is where you can define your multiple your queries at multiple stage so for example, for first one, let's use a match. Okay, um, match. And here you can define your queries. So the query will be the same content. So let's say favorite count is a uh, dollar greater than one. Okay, so now you can see after this stage, all the tweets, okay, uh, are the tweets that the favorite is greater than one. And you can add the second stage. Say I want a project. Here you can see I want to see the text. Te uh, text key, which is one. So now you can see you can see all the tweets that favorite is greater than one and also you can see the text. Um, and you can also see I want also see the favorite count. Okay, so you can see all the tweets that do have more than one favorite. Okay, uh, so if you disable this match, now you can see the tweets that have favorite zero will also be returned. Okay, and you can also switch the order. So for example, if you put the project before that, okay. So the tweets will first be projected and next will run this match. Okay, so that's why that in the first stage that you can see all the tweets that uh, favorite is below two, it will be retained. But after you run this match, you can see that that only tweets that have more than two favorites will be retained. Okay, so let's talk about uh, so and also similarly, you can also use the sort. Okay, so that. Uh, you can sort by specific keys and also you can also use limit.
for example, you can if you just want return one, and you can use that as well. So back to our example. So here, let's say let's put match first. Okay, and uh, the order is important. So generally, we want put match first because that can fill out a lot of unrelated tweets, and next your queries will be more faster. So the order of those uh, aggregations is very important. So let's say we match out the tweet that has more than two favorites. Here, let's use sort. OK, and let's sort by favorite count with descending. OK, and now you can see now the tweet is in this descending order. And let's add limit. OK, so let's just see. I just want one tweet. OK. And that is the top one tweet, most favorited. And if I just want five, and you can see the top five most favorited tweets. And you can also use count function, so that will return the existing number of document that at current stage. And it will pass, and you have defined a name for this um, variable that will pass uh, whatever you define as a key and also value as a value for the next stage. So, for example, if I see number of tweets and the result will be that how many number of tweets at, at current stage. Uh, you can also sort uh, your result. So, for example, you can sort by count. We are just need to define, okay, so what is a key you need to, def uh, to define to, to sort? And you can see here, I want to sort by username. Make sure that in this case, you need a dollar. Okay, because username is now considered a parameter, not a not a simple key. And you can use sort by count. Okay, uh, so let's go back to our uh, results. So let's say we match the tweets that is greater than one, and also we project the number of tweets, and we project the favorite count, and also text. And also we sort the result based on the favorite count, and also we link the result to five. And if now I add, say, sort, uh, a count, okay, and then call it number of tweets, you can see the result is five, because at, at the current stage, there are only five tweets. Why? Because we use this limit function. So if we uncheck this one, we can see the number of tweets at current stage is 116. Why? Because we matched out the result uh, that we limit. OK, it's only tweets that have more than one favorite will be returned. So if I also uncheck this one, now you can see I have 3,000 tweets. Why? Because I didn't enable any match. So all the tweets has been returned, although I did have this project. And also, I did have this uh, favorite of uh, the sort. OK. So that is a count. Uh, so if I want to use sort by count. OK, so let's remove all the stage. Let's try sort by count. And let's just try user dot name and remember we don't need those curly bracket and also we need type dollar okay so now you can see we are sort by number of time that username we have so here we can see this is a, a most um, popular popular user and also we have to have the other users okay it is already sort and also based on count of the user keys. So if we use a tweet ID, and you can see all the tweets have the same number of the count because the tweet ID is unique. If you get lost, pause the video here and also try to play those um, operators again on your own and see if those can make sense to you. Next, let's see the un unwind. Remember that the document can contain list or arrays. So we can unwind each single item in that list 
into a separate document by using this unwind um, operator. So you need to tell that the path name of that field, which is a list. OK, so for example, here, if I want to unwind all the hashtags, I just use this unwind. And also in the path, I tell OK that that is a hashtag within these entities. And next, if I just want to see the hashtags, I can use those uh, hashtags. I can use this project. I want to see the Twitter ID, text, and also all those hashtags. And finally, I can also sort by the IDs, so that by the Twitter ID, so that we can see that for each single tweet, uh, how many hashtags they are using. Okay, so how many different hashtags they are using. Okay, and I know that is a little bit confusing, so let's see an example. So here, let's say we are using unwind. And for the pass, we are going to use hashtags, entities, hashtags. And let's remove everything else. Okay, and we need to type a dollar sign for this one. Okay, uh, so it may not change anything yet because we still have a lot of stuff we want to see uh, are showing up here. So now let's use a project. OK, so here, let's say we want to see the ID and we want to see the text. And we also want um, to see the hashtags. So entities and those hashtags, which is one. OK. OK, so now hopefully this will make sense to you. So. You can see that without with this unwind, and we can see that uh, we split the we we kind of duplicate the documents that for each single hashtag we create a, a unique document. So for example, for this tweet, it has the has only one hashtag, um, and now for this tweet, that's only one hashtag. So let's sort. So let me. Uh, Let's say we sort by ID. OK, uh, so now you can see that this is the same tweet. And if you look at the text and it has multiple hashtags, OK, multiple hashtags. But because we unwind the hashtags so that in this final result, OK, so there's just one hashtag for this result and also for the same tweet. That is the second hashtag. Okay, that is the second hashtag. So for the same tweet, okay, we unwind each hashtag into multiple documents, into multiple results. So if I uncheck unwind, and now you can see for this tweet, I do have two hashtags. Okay, let's see. Yeah, for this tweet, I also have two hashtags. But if I unwind based on the hashtags, you can see for each single result, there's just one hashtag, OK? Even they are come from the same tweets. OK, the last one is aggregate. So uh, similar to SQL, you can also do some aggregations. And the same tag is that we're going to use a group function, OK? And you have to tell that uh, based on which key do you want to aggregate. And also, you have to define the uh, expression that how do you want to aggregate. Okay, uh, so for, for example, in this case, we want to aggregate based on the username. Okay, based on the username, so we define okay, underscore ID is username, and uh, we want to aggregate based on the sum. So we want to calculate how many username are there. So we give the key that is called user count. And also, the value will be sum and also one. Okay, and so let's say a, an example here. So let's say we want to use a group. Okay, and so based on which key do you want to use? And uh, let's say we want to use uh, here still use dollar user 
dot name. Okay. Uh, we also need to use a double quotation mark. Okay. So, and also, how do you want to aggregate your result? So here you have defined the field name, which is a new field for the aggregation result. So I call it user count. And how do you want to aggregate? So I'm going to use dollar sum. So each time it help if we find out a new username, I will increase by one. Okay. So now you can see we have this user that sh shows up one time, and also we have a lot of other users. And we can also sort. So let's say sort. Okay, we know that in the previous stage we have user ID, ID is username, and also we have user count. So let's say we sort by user count. And we use descending. Okay, and so now we can see which user has has uh, has been collected most number of times, or which user send out the most number of the tweets. Okay, so you may wonder, okay, so this is the same result as sort by, and I, I will say yes. So in this example, the result is equivalent to sort by. Okay, but sometimes if you don't have a very uh, but sometimes, for example, if you unwind uh, the hashtags and you want count number of hashtags, you can also use group. So, uh, so yeah, in this case, it's similar to the sort by. But sometimes, if you want count the values within a list, and you have to unwind that one, and also you use group, and you cannot use sort by directly. 